Oh, that's uh, that's going too far here. I see. All right, I'm gonna have to cut that back. Oops. Not paying attention. So this can just go straight forward from here. That's <laughs> too far once you do never come back. I might become a, a jock, Cody. <laughs> I might start drinking beer, even. <laughs> uh, straight across... I guess we can step down. A lot of this is very flat already. <laughs> you drink beer. Uh, unconventional game design ideas. What if the maps were just like flat rectangles? <laughs> I guess uh, soccer cars. What is it called? Rocket Rocket League. Rocket League is like that. Yes. <laughs> Although even Rocket League, they tried to make it more complicated by having like different shapes and like slopes and whatnot. I still haven't watched Rocket League Esports. I need to. Okay, let me just look this up. Rocket League Esports. I, I need to watch Rocket League Esports. You used to be a Rocket League addict. <laughs> See, I don't understand how you could. Isn't it just like. Was well, pretty darn good. Okay. I don't <laughs> but it's just the same car and the same ball over and over again. <laughs> I, I know it's not a good justification <laughs> for anything. Like, I know it's not an argument, but... <laughs> my gut reaction is... <laughs> it's just like a couple of cars and a ball. <laughs> it is skill-based. It is definitely skill-based, Cody. I agree with that. It's pretty skill based. It's about speed, positioning, and skill at boosting the skies. I used to play friends and win three on one. <laughs> what does that mean? What does it mean to be good at Rocket League? <laughs> what does it say about you as a person? You are good at driving rocket cars. They stop playing me after a couple of months. Well, <laughs> it's hard when you're bad at rocket cars. You know, it's it's hard to live up to <laughs> to flying a car into a ball into a goal. It's rough. <laughs> I can understand. I do we slope one two one two? Do we slope down? Okay, let's slope down a little bit. Uh, from there.
like you hit the ball to the side of the map and you stop chasing if you're smart. Yeah, that's right. That's right. The strategy. <laughs> it's it's important to be a smart rocket car. Don't be a dumb rocket car. Be a smart rocket car. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I played a little bit of Rocket League on the when there was like a free weekend. I didn't feel like it was my thing. You love unique multiplayer. It is quite interesting, Rocket League. Yeah, and, and you do have to learn something new because it's like a whole physics system. You've played so many video games in my life that shooters and crap brought me to tears. I need a unique take. A unique take. And Rocket League was it for a while. I can see that. I can see that. Okay, that's completely overextended. Let me line this up properly. Cody says, I personally feel I just hit my skill limit super quickly in things I'm used to. <laughs> play, uh, play StarCraft? <laughs> it's, wait, hold on. How many things have no skill ceiling? <laughs> Video games need innovation. Well, can you, can you invent something, Cody? Like, if you can imagine... How would you how would somebody do that? Like how would a game designer? The only issue is I don't like RTS games, the irony. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six, seven, How would how do you think a game designer can do what you say you want? Let's join that up. And then we have to fill in the ground back here because I mistakenly did this. The only way is to be someone that doesn't have to rely on funding, sadly. Hmm. I mean, I guess uh, one clue is like which games have you spent a lot of hours in? Which video game innovation doesn't exist because there has to be some guarantee of profit. It does exist. <laughs> well, yeah, basically, the indies who can afford to lose their money does all the innovating.
Dead by Daylight, Final Fantasy XI, Rocket League, Dark Souls initially felt that way for me. Okay, Rocket League, Dark Souls, Dead by Daylight, Final Fantasy XI. They're all very different. <laughs> I'm just imagining the uh, the market research guy at a game company trying to figure out what games will be successful and then you're just giving a list of completely different things different but similar in that they are unique Suddenly thinking about Total War. Total War is just making the same thing over and over again, which is a real shame. <laughs> I mean, I quite enjoyed Total War when I first played it. I first played Medieval, the first one, and then Rome, and then Medieval 2, and then it's just the same stuff over and over again. But Total War is not just the same stuff over and over again. Like, in order to try to make things different, they often make it worse. <laughs> like some of the newer games are worse. Gary's mod, yeah. Dead by Daylight, Final Fantasy XI, Rocket League, Dark Souls, Gary's mods. So, hmm. I think I... Uh, slope down, diagonal across. Oh, I can bridge over that stuff. Hold on, which side do I go? I can stay on that side, bridge over. Maelstrom, a unique take on Battle Royale. Okay, so here's one of the stations. And then the other one is... over there. Uh, I guess I stay on this side. There has to be a junction over here at some point. Maelstrom, pirate ships in water, though it's a battle royale. Oh, I see. <laughs> a pirate ship battle royale. I need to demolish some of these trees. Don't starve. I I bought Don't Starve. I haven't played it yet. You destroyed that game for a few months. There's a few months worth of content. <laughs> I didn't think there would be. Don't have to destroy that tree. You played those stuff together with friends, probably went through it 30 times, I see. Got better each time until you had everything within 5 days in game time. <laughs> So, you solved the game at that point? Or were there still, like, unsolved challenges?
Got to a point where you felt you couldn't get it done quicker. I should go a little further and ramp down two blocks at a time. Cause it says Cuphead was at least unique aesthetically enough to intrigue you, but you find a DLC stupid. Cuphead, I haven't played it, but apart from the aesthetics, is it any different from any? Platformer. Four, five, six, seven. And uh, let me break this. Not really. Yeah, okay. It says, in regards to your multiplayer board game idea, it's only two to four players, but... Well, okay, go, keep keep going. We might be able to scale that up. <laughs> For the king is a cool idea, it's a co-op board game overworld thing. Hold on, let me just go. For the king... Alright, so I'm gonna look at this in my own time. Strategic RG RPG blends tabletop and roguelike elements. Hmm. 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 Like I see how it's board game ish. Uh, let me get up to here. Civilization movement with RG, RPG battles. If we, I mean, if you want to scale it up, I guess you'd have to simplify the battles. Do you, do you have to? Maybe you don't have to simplify the battles. No, I guess, like, the battles can be their own little instance thing. Or maybe make the board just really huge. Yeah. Yeah. Like, just a really big board, and the battles can still be your little squad. Time turns on login. I guess like even the simultaneous turns or the time turns you can't have people moving faster than others because otherwise like some people are just thinking and the other people just kind of run around the map so maybe like you have a a maximum speed but no minimum speed so that if you like just don't move you just pass the turn and you just stay still so if you don't like actually move then you just pass the turn <laughs> 